Hello and welcome back to the Rock Hill Tour Stop brought to you by the Spikeball Tour Series. We're joining now for the Pro Division Finals, the most anticipated match of the weekend. We've got the number three ranked Sloppy Seconds taking on Buddy Hammond and Frederick Hinkle. I'm Ezra Dantowitz here with Ben Dantowitz. Ben, what are you looking forward to in this match? We've got two players in a mashup that have won tour stops before this year. We saw and learned about it in the preview, and they've been playing super well all weekend. They just got challenged a bit in the semifinal. But I'm excited to see this mashup team challenge the top team that is established at this tournament, Sloppy Seconds. Yeah, Sloppy Seconds now has taken down the number two team in the country, Rito Boys, and the number one team, Boisterous. If they can win this tournament, they've got really the best claim to number one in the country of anyone. It's just about how they adapt to these two very different play styles. Frederick Hinkle, a very powerful and I think listed as technical player, and Buddy Hammond, who just really goes with the flow, but is an excellent defender, probably the all-time best defender we've seen. Super athletic, always making plays around the net. Yeah, look for him to get a couple of really close-up touches at the net, maybe some soft touches and setting Hinkle for kills as Hinkle lines up the serve. Yeah, we talked about this a little bit in the semifinal with those teams not taking anything off their second serves. Frederick is power through and through. He won't do it either. I mean, he might mix in a drop once or twice, but he's swinging hard every single point. Yeah, I'd take the under on him ever dropping. But a double fault to start this finals matchup. Core lining up against Hammond. Big step out, but not finding it there. Maybe just some jitters as we start game one of this finals with all these missed serves. Second one in play. And Hammond set a little bit off net by Hinkle. Can't get the ball in play. And Core doing something he did last series in the semifinals, getting really close to net, trying to cut off all those angles. He gave a lot of praise to Boisterous in their skilled hitting. Hammond, no different as a really strong hitter. Yeah, one thing different about Hammond is he... D what? what? And what? doesn't even open his hips up. Just reaches out to wow. the left and gets that ball wide and low still without moving the feet. I'll say there's two people who did not know that serve existed. One of them is me, and the other one is certainly Frederick Hinkle. I'll add myself to that list gladly. That was exceptional from Core. So he now establishes that range going left and right. Look Goes back out. to the right. Hammond thought it might have been high. They're going to send that to the observers to yeah. check on their perspectives. So the, the ruling is if the ball is completely above the receiver's shoulder when it reaches the receiver or passes them, then it is a high serve illegal. They're going to rule that that ball was not completely above the shoulder. Again, if any point of the ball is even with the top of the shoulder, then it's a clean serve. So ace for core. Back to left hand. And Hinkle plays to the rim, just pushed past We're trying to get some excitement into, into his teammate Fanaki, but they're already up 4-1 here early in game game one, similar to what they did against Boisterous in the semifinals. As Fanaki settles, pulls that at Hinkle, and Hinkle puts that away no problem. We saw a lot of lefty putaways and backhands from Fanaki in the semifinals. That forehand right in the defense where they want on that strong hand. Yeah, and that's a tough feeling. First point that you're receiving of the series, you get deed up that easily. It gets in your head a little bit, makes you second guess your hitting. Hinkle is just right on top Waiting of it. Waiting on it, yeah. As Hammond tries to put it in play, misses with the forehand. Wind picking up a little bit here. You can maybe only see it in Buddy Hammond's hair flowing, but it, it affects the tosses a little bit. We said Hinkle is not going to take anything off his second serves. Hammond, the defensive-minded player, definitely will. He might see him going for more drops on second serves, trying to get the ball in play. As Fanaki goes reverse, lips up too high for Hinkle. Steps out again, goes cut, rev a reverse cut there. Hinkle calls side pocket, observers agree. He even even Fanaki didn't disagree. So side pocket called, 3-5, Hammond Hinkle. And it looked like a little little bit of a maybe a score check there. So they're going to replay the first serve there as, ha as uh, Hinkle was interrupted in a serving motion by Gabe Fanaki. So here's the second serve now coming from Hinkle, having corrected the score. And that one right at Fanaki, fielded with two hands. Set just off from court, yeah. kind of botched it. Ball was up there from Fanaki, definitely in the air for a while, so tough to find it, but he just did not give Fanaki a chance to put that ball back on. The green light not changing. Hinkle only swinging hard here. 
Another one in play for Core. Put on the left, and he pushes it low outside the range of Buddy Hammond, who is on that pull shot. Good awareness there to know that gap is open for Core. Yeah, just one serve, really, from Hinkle so far. Just that power stance, kind of pull over the top, a little bit of cut. I think he can work with the angles a little bit so he's not hitting in the same spot. But it might just also be strategy to say, start with one thing, don't let them see all of what you've got early, and then adjust as they figure out how to return it. Yeah, he's definitely playing around that strike zone as it will, going left and right, more or less cut with that same stance and approach. So you don't know what's coming until it's on the net. Do receive there. Hinkle takes it no problem, able to pull that just past Core's body. He was right in the spot, kind of hit him right next to the arm. Yeah, these teams still feeling out their early range, what the defensive looks might look like to get those bra breaks off of serves, as that one is high above Finaki's shoulder. And some more wind gusting in. There's the drop again by Hammond. And there's the backhand we saw Finaki felt so comfortable with in the semifinals. No problem splitting the defense really low, well centered from core. Yeah, Finaki has not hit his best stuff yet. If he can get that going, it'll be trouble for Hammond and Hinkle. As he pulls that, but Hammond in position, and a nice push drop opens up his hand and wrist to get that ball to the right of everybody. You notice the difference between how take Fanaki compared to Hammond. Hammond hits a lot higher on his hits, but he's crafty enough and knows his spots that he can get kills just as easily. And a great quick offensive set there from Sloppy Seconds. They get the wow. clean touches up. They're able to not not uh, not quite uh, carry those touches it looked like and get them just in play. A really good on from core off net. So the question is, there are active calls, meaning the observers can stop the play and call them. You'll see that most commonly on when players go into the no-hit zone. Carries or throws on touches is another one they can call. The player's just confirming, hey, if the, if the observers don't call it, can we as the player still call it if we were pretty sure we saw it? The answer is yes, but it's tough to know if the observers will agree with you if the opponent disagrees. As Hinkle feels the serve, no problem. Pulls that around everybody. Hammond serving down 7-8 in game one. Goes forehand. And oh gets oh under Fanaki's hand. Shoots into the ground for a big Hammond ace. Tied up now. Going forehand. Again. Skims, skims just under Buddy's hand there. But they do get the game back to tied at eights. Now Fanaki serving 9-8. Yeah, Hammond has a decent arsenal of serves. He now has a bit of a cut. He can work the jam, and then he has a backhand that he'll sometimes go to if he needs to. But like we saw in second serves, he'll tap it on. He's much more of a finesse server than a power server, and he's looking to make his Let's spot. Go! Wow. Finaki there, that's pulling that gross. incredibly low. The ball didn't come above Finkel's knee, and that's a no-touch ace. There's no answer for it, especially with the range he has to the other side. As he goes reverse cut, but that one lips up above Hammond's shoulder. But had Hammond dancing so much. He, he beat Hammond on the back door after Hammond shifted. That's crazy. Yeah. And that serve receive, either a carry or Hinkle maybe trying to call the serve no good. We, we may go to the observers here to, to get a check on the perspectives there. So Hinkle is not calling high. He's saying that Fanaki dragged his foot on the serve. Again, the rule is you have to maintain one point of contact with the ground from where you start until the ball hits the net. So Hinkle's saying Fanaki's probably back toe moved from hit spot before he actually made contact, the ball made contact with the net. Tricky part here is the observers are supposed to be watching this and if they're not calling it, it means they did not see it. And so that's what they're going with. No foot fault and an ace for Fanaki. So now 11-8. And that reverse cut. Man. Blown by the wind and Hinkle unable to tap that one on. The touch going really downwind, well positioned by by uh, Vinaki to put that into the wind, and Hammond unable to track deep. Yeah, and just uh, it just breezes, so it comes and goes. Right now, there's nothing, but like you said a minute ago, it was blowing. So Hammond looks to reset here, receiving Vinaki, and that touch. Rim on the serve. Off the rim. And they go to observers. Observers with the clear perspective give them the, the rim confirmation there. So that's a double fault for Fanaki, but not before doing some damage on a couple of 
breaks. Hinkle and Hammond are fighters, though. They dropped game one in their semifinal. I think an extra is 27-25-ish. But fought back in game two and eventually took it in three. So they're no strangers to being down, especially early in a series. And never want to count them out, especially with Hammond's defensive prowess. He's able to get touches even if the serves aren't acing. As Hinkle lines up a reverse cut of his own. And Kor tries the, the open push shot with nobody home on defense, uh, but the defensive pressure cutting off his good options is enough for the break. Yeah, and we haven't seen Kor do too many of those open lefty hits. He maybe had one or two in the semi, but not as comfortable with that shot. Let's go, baby. Yeah, a lot of comfortability there from Fanaki pulling that with a dominant hand. Him and joking that most people hit it into his body on that hit. Fanaki recognizing where the defense is and pulling it past him. Core steps out, turfs it. Yeah. Another step out. That one much wider. Well controlled by Hammond and Hinkle. And sent far over everybody. Right over that VII apparel sign, the official jersey provider of Spike Ball. Eleven thirteen, still very much in this game one. A great wrap from Core, able to dive over the no hit zone, pull that cleanly, and maintain the hold. A little bit sloppier than you'd like for sloppy seconds. Some trouble getting that back. And so far it's looked like the best chance for him and Hinkle has been when they're serving to Travis Core. Not quite as clean on their touches. Ooh. As Fanaki throws down a great reverse cut, but that one looked to have hit the side pocket. So Hinkle wisely calls a fault. Another serve. That one up high over Hinkle. Fanaki getting a lot of good spin there, just not quite landing it near net. As Hinkle winds up, Ooh. little awkward hit from Fanaki. A body up, and oh a great lefty goodness. save. What a point. So and that same voca vocal from uh, from Core there. Fanaki kind of missed that hit. Easy dig for Frederick, but Core just happens to be there, and then even when the offset powers through on that left, great play. Follows it up with a great serve. Hammond has to go high and far. But Fanaki's under the set. And that's into and off of the buddy for the, the break. Puts them up four now, 16-12. We haven't seen too many of those kind of offsets that force the hitter into an awkward position, but Sloppy Seconds doing well to clean up on the opportunity. Core stepping out left. Goes it. They resettle here. Very interesting, if you watch Hinkle on that receive, he started out almost even, and then without Core even tossing, just kind of as Core was slowly deciding what to do, he shuffle steps slowly one to the right, kind of guessing, okay, I don't think Core is going left anymore based on his body positioning. I'm not going to wait for you to toss to adjust. I'm going to go now. I think it's safe. Yeah, it allows him to get in position and, and really catch up to the speed of those serves as Hammond lines up a drop. And that lefty we've seen so much of in the semifinals from Fanaki clear through the defense. Yeah, that lefty hitting is definitely underrated. Having the ability to go both ways that consistently and really having no weakness there is huge for Fanaki. Yeah. He's able to kill pretty much any set over the net. Opens up a lot of those directions, especially with the no hit zone, backing people off the net. You can still get those directional sets and to go left or right. Second serve wide for Hammond. He's under it and drops it just past Fanaki. He can't quite get under it to get it high enough for the core set. Great recognition by Hammond, seeing even though Fanaki might be here, I think I've got just enough space to drop this in front of him. Fanaki gets a hand on it, but not quite enough. So timeout here by Hammond and Hinkle, just trying to catch the breath a little bit before the run that they'll need to regain the lead in game one. But it's 17-14 sloppy seconds in the lead. What do you need to see from Hammond and Hinkle to cl catch up? It's the same things we talked about in the pregame, right? Hinkle hasn't been putting enough pressure on those serves. They need to take advantage of core maybe a bit more but Hammond needs to get some more defensive touches he was joking that they're not hitting the ball at his body he needs to move his body into those hits and get those touches up and convert some defensive plays there have been a couple of scrappy ones that they didn't quite refine and get that last put away yeah I think that's fair for Hinkle serving we've seen he's going with that same stance same serve 
angling or varying a little bit where in the net it hits that it kind of comes into the server or the receiver rather different points if he's got anything else to mix it up then this is the time to do it see if he can really challenge the receivers and then whether it's just shifting up their rotation or just making slight adjustments for him to try to get in front of more balls maybe more last second guessing so that they have a chance to stop some of those clean hits by Fanaki and core yeah we've seen a lot of those points being traded back and forth where you see now Hammond and Hickle are getting around those wide serves from both players on sloppy seconds. That's great. The holds are important to keep them in it. They need to convert on their defensive touches, though. Yeah, and if Finaki and Cork can just stay solid on offense, that should be enough. They don't really need to get any breaks, but you never want to be too content, right? We talked about this in that boisterous series. Once you take your foot off the gas, it's open for the other team to step on it. So right on. they've got to stay on here and really finish out this game strong. So back to Hinkle, 14-17. That first one no. not being played, just a bit high. I said no. Okay. Another big swing coming, but it's a drop. I lost my under. And core goes high over Hinkle. Answers the drop with a boom. And that's something that Hinkle was able to open up over the course of the game. Try to open up that space deep to drop it short, but that drop shot a little too high and core a little too quick as he lines up serving here off the rim. Core opens up left, goes wide. Hinkle gets a hand clean on it, and core with a high touch. Fanaki can't find the set. It's up in the sun. A great serve received there by Hinkle, though. Ranging wide to his left, getting a clean, flat hand on it, and him with a clean set for the put away from Hinkle. Keeps that game within three. Now 15 18 here for Buddy Hammond. Let's be sick, says Hammond. They opt for the high call there. Their football is actually called by the observer. So dragging a toe on when he hits that backhand. No option on that active call. As Buddy puts that one in play for Gabe. Fanaki puts off the body touch. And they wow. do it. They put the ball into his body for the touch. Hinkle yeah. on the diving set. Great reaction by Buddy just getting in front of that last second, angling it towards Frederick. And just managing to get that drop on. That's the point. Hammond now steps for the forehand. Come on, Yowzer! Open shot there for Core, just finding it and knowing I can take this for free. Hinkle was all the way behind him for the pull. They did get that one break back. They need to hold on to that gap they closed just a bit. Still down a couple with Fanaki serving 19-16. As that's another double fault. But just like you were saying in the game three of the semis, you know, Hinkle can get one and Hammond can get one. Over the next two serving exchanges, that would tie it right back up. 17-19, good serve. But Travis Core responds with a nice recovery set, gives Fanaki time to get to the net, and Fanaki just puts it over the defense, makes that 2017 game point. Three chances here for Sloppy Seconds to take this first game. You know Core wants it here, though. Steps out, nice cut serve. And Hinkle with an unorthodox backhand on two, into, right into Core, too. Hinkle's aggressive. I mean, the machine plays how it wants to play, and that's what Hinkle's doing. He sees an opportunity to hit it, he's going to hit the ball. That's what he does, hit ball hard. Buddy tr needs to drop that play call again, do some sick stuff at 18-20. That one at core, well settled, though. A touch, and Hinkle can't quite reach as he gives chase off frame. Obstructed a little bit by Hammond as he was going for it, but that's a tough play to make running that far out of frame. Either way, 21-18 sloppy seconds takes the first game. Good showing by them. They were kind of up most of the way. About halfway through the game they had a lead, didn't really let it go. Up three. I think big thing was serve and serve receive. That's nothing new. For Hammond and Hinkle, they've got to get more touches on defense if they're not going to do it on serves. Hammond was in the spots a few times, but not quite getting the touches up. And we saw a hint of that, what might be to come in game two, with a couple of touches late in game one. A little too late, but if they're able to get those tuned up a little more, they can get those breaks in game two and maybe force a third game in the finals here in Rock Hill. Yeah, so thanks for tuning in for game one. We're going to take a quick break and then be right back with game two. See you soon.
Welcome back to Rock Hill, the fourth stop on the Spikeball Tour Series. We're here now in the Pro Finals, coming back for Game 2. We just saw Sloppy Seconds take Game 1 over Frederick Hinkle and Buddy Hammond. Looking for some update, for some changes in the gameplay, really. Hammond and Hinkle are going to have to make some updates. Ben, what did it have to do? Yeah, we talked about at the end of the game, they were getting some more of those touches up in the air. That's great. They need to get those touches back to and convert. Their offense was looking a little cleaner at the end of the game with Sloppy up consistently two to three points late. If they can maintain that offensive consistency, open up opportunities for, Fink for Hinkle and Hammond to get big serves in, they can flip the script here in game two. Okay, let's get this game two of finals underway. Frederick Hinkle to serve first. And that one over Fanaki. Out wide, but well recovered from core. Fanaki a little bit uncomfortable off net with the lefty. We've seen a lot of good putaways with him with the left hand, but when he's well centered and comfortable, that off net, he knows he's got to beat a defender, so it's a little trickier, a little more pressure on that swing. Nico still going for that same serve, really. He's rocking back and forth to generate some extra torque and just trying to drive that ball straight across the net. Oh, that was a that good one. That one cut well, but also received. Ball hit right at Hinkle, who puts the ball away for another break. Interesting there on, on that hit. Hinkle doesn't really even check the defense. I mean, I'm sure he sees core, but just blasts it right into his body in a way. Not looking to get around the defense or anything, just a pure power play. Yeah, he knows he knows he's putting a hard hit on the net, and if the other team is going to make a play, it's going to be a tough one. So two breaks to open it up for Hinkle and Hammond. Another serve in play for Hinkle. And that time, Fanaki comfortable <laughs> as Buddy gets the first touch. Outside the seven-foot circle, he's not allowed to take that second touch for the soft touch play, uh, but just, just practicing his chops, diving about. That might pay off later with another diving opportunity. Yeah, so that outer circle is the serving circle. It's seven feet from the net. When you're serving, your feet have to be outside it. You can't fall into it. But it also plays a role on defense. If you get the first touch on defense here within the circle, you can take the second touch as well to your partner. Core goes wide of that serve. But Hammond shuffles well. Core not too pleased with that result. Both teams feeling out both the plays and also maybe some of the calls about the plays. Just trying to make sure there's consistency. They know what to expect as far as whether serves are high or clean. Hammond with a nice backhand. Didn't see that in game one much. Core finding the opening, just going right between the defenders. Hammond saying, I'm waiting for it to hit my body. He knows he has to adjust, but he's kind of making jokes, keeping it light, wants to have that light feel throughout this final. I think he'll maintain the open invitation. If Sloppy wants it, the ball at his body, he's happy to hear it. A great rip from Fanaki. Just clipping rim. Just inside. See Hinkle settling that ser that serve receive well with his hand fully extended wide, bent over, but he just overpowers that spike, hits off back rim. Yeah, tough set, a little bit high. We saw that once or twice in game one where Hinkle and Hammond's sets weren't quite on the money. They needed some off hits. Hammond plays through the f <laughs> and pulls it behind core. Yeah, I'm sure you heard it from core there, but uh, he ran the wrong way. Yeah, You hate to see it, you hate to do it, but you love to hear it. Yeah, not like with, with that vocal kind of movement from a uh, core, you know he's you know he's still high energy. He's in this game. He wants to get it. A tricky lefty received by core. He ran so far right, but Hinkle feels the spike and misses another one. Hammond sets him a little bit off net yet again. That's what we were looking for. They're getting those first touches, even on some of their offensive sets, even defensively, where their first touches are clean, the second touch isn't quite centered, and it doesn't give them that same comfortability on the spike to put it away. Core looking to hit his partner on that cut serve, more or less. Yeah, that's, uh, Core describes that as kind of like the race of serving, where he's racing to get as far wide and hit the ball as far wide as possible before the returner can get that far wide. That was a great example of it with Hinkle ranging right as Core's ranging right, just not able to land it. And the way he keeps the receiver honest then is by mixing in the drop or the lefty serve, which he saw him do to great effect in game one. Hammond lining up his serve. A little off balance there. 
Usually you see Hammond with both feet on the ground for his serves as he steps out for a tap on second. Fielded cleanly, but high for Hinkle. Hammond trying to find the center here and forces a soft spike that Finaki can't get back to net cleanly. So you see there the offense from Hinkle and Hammond not perfect, but they keep the ball in play, force sloppy seconds to make it, and they can't clean it up. Yeah, and the other thing there, Frederick Hinkle was in the perfect right spot for Gabe Finaki's left hand there. Finaki's lining up the left, doesn't hit it as clean or low, and honestly, if he hits that a little bit less, it probably doesn't reach Hinkle, who's 12 feet away from net. Core making things look a little more routine there. Keeps it within one, now 5-6, Finaki on the ball. Reverse and play. Hinkle, no problem with a backhand flick. Ooh. That was cheeky, just opening up the wrist and hitting it like a little inside-out flick shot. Haven't seen that yet from Hinkle. Again, usually the power player, but he makes the adjustments as needed. Speaking of power, puts that one hard but high. And no one on Fanaki's left hand there, where Frederick was just moments ago. This time, he's trying to funnel to Buddy, and Buddy didn't get into the spot either. I think Hinkle got caught ball-watching a little bit, didn't expect him to play that serve. They opt not to play the shin high rim serve. So that's a second serve for core here. Goes forehand again. Handled comfortably. A push just outside core. We saw Hammond do that a couple times game one next to Finaki where he's putting in a spot where maybe their touch is going to happen, but it's not going to be a, a clean touch or a challenging touch to get the ball back to net. Yeah, just smart hitting there. Hammond sliding in front of Fanaki there for the defensive touch. An interesting defensive scheme. They're trying to stay really close to that the entire time so we can cut off angles. Uh, they're uh, talking about it now. It seems like they were a little bit out of sync on that one. We'll make the adjustment. Fanaki off of rim. <laughs> Hinkle dancing the out of the way of that one. And another fault for Fanaki there. Ball back to Hinkle here. They're maintaining that two-point lead, now 9-7 for Hinkle and Hammond. They'd like to break away, get a little bit more wiggle room to work with. The other thing you'll notice is Hammond, not Hammond, Hinkle loves the fast pace of play. He'll get a ball and serve within two seconds. <laughs> he's, he's definitely the fastest player on tour. Nobody else quite does it like him. I think he likes it because he knows it's him setting the pace. He doesn't you know, wait for any. He needs to wait to make sure the receiver's ready. But he's not giving them time to really think about what serve is coming. He just hits it while they're standing there. Yeah, he doesn't have to think too hard. He knows he's going to hit it hard. Let's go! And core goes hard and wide. Okay. Hammond trying to make the high call, it looks like. We'll see if the uh, perspective is given. Looks like that's a clean serve. Clean, yep. The yep. observer is quick to rule that as an ace. Yeah, one of them had a good perspective, so... No discussion needed. Core steps out again. Another wide serve. Hinkle in position. And a nice backhand oh, pull. Wow. Great, great skip hit. and a hop over the no-hit zone there. A great hit. We've seen some of those shots from Fanaki today. I think that was the first one we really saw Hinkle hit that well, just directly behind him, flailing a little bit past the net, but no problem there. Hammond with the forehand. A little errant from Fanaki, but Core able to center him. That ball right to Hinkle. Another spot where Hinkle's just in the right spot. Makes the simple play. That's a big break for them. Yeah, that's twice now that Hinkle has dug Fanaki pretty easily, and this time it's to get the break right back. So now they're back up by two. Good swing for them. Didn't let to their head. Yeah, he's not even fielding that defensive touch in motion. He's sitting and waiting. A little reverse cut from Hammond there. Core pulls that to the right of Buddy. Fanaki needs to take this chance to get his serves going. Hit his best stuff. Hinkle almost looks disappointed he couldn't play that rim. <laughs> it's just too high. <laughs> he knows. They're wanting to set the pace. Yeah, well, that and if there's anything that Fanaki is not hitting clean, there's a good chance he can get an easy touch. But no touch needed there. Another double fault. You now, Fred. Hinkle's serving here 12 10 in game two. With Sloppy taking the first game, Hinkle and Hammond need this one to push game three. As you see, Fanaki. Thinking the same way about Hinkle's hits. He wants to play the easy ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little scramble from Fanaki to get out of the no-hit zone. But the ball goes high enough, and he's clear of it. 
That's a clean put away. Yeah, so that lefty was one that he really skied. We haven't, we didn't see that from semis, but again, he's been dug a couple of times by Hinkle now. Maybe thinking a little bit more about his hits instead of trusting the finesse game, going for power. Mm -hmm. I think is, if he gets set for the right there, it's probably open. But with a lefty hit, he's having to hit it through two defenders. Much harder challenge. Absolutely. Teams resetting after that long rundown attempt by Hammond and Hinkle. Core steps out and tries to push it. Right at buddy. Another step out here. Yeah, that one maybe off the side pocket or high. Shout out our sponsor, Hampton Farms, the official nut of Spike Ball, Spike Ball Tour Series. And Hampton Farms bringing us peanuts at every tour stop. If you haven't been to a tour stop yet, definitely check them out when you visit one. Core fields that cleanly, but hits it into buddy's body. They rotate here 12 13. Sloppy still down, serving down one at least. Hinkle lining up the receive. Gabe goes wide right. And the ball not recovered from Hinkle's first touch. Hammond can't give him an opportunity to hit. Yeah, great serve, pushing Frederick Hinkle out to his right, making it a lot harder for Hammond to get back and get the touch. He's got to range all the way across the net himself. And you heard right before that point, Core telling Hinkle, it's his time. He's got to get one in play. So. There's another good one from him. Wow. Another big ace. So back to back, strong serves. Getting some breaks. They're up now. One instead of serving down one. And forces the timeout by Hammond and Hinkle. So that's exactly what you hope for. You want to get the lead, really set the pace yourself. Smart play by Hammond and Hinkle, stopping the momentum by calling a timeout. They're going to regroup, figure out what do they need to do to get control of this game again, right? They had it for a while there. They were up pretty pretty comfortably sitting up the one two breaks but not really challenged Finaki comes back with his serves and fires off so it's going to be an exciting finish to game two yeah you saw in game one Hammond and Hinkle were moving really well side to side to get that range of serves those maybe two lulls there maybe those serves are just coming a little bit too fast for them not ready for a game to land them after a couple of double faults earlier in game two but that's going to be the difference is making those big serve receives and then cleaning up their offense. Yeah, for Funaki, he's got to stay hot. It's always tough when you hit two big serves and have to take a break. But you got to come in locked in right out of this break and try to fire your best stuff yet again. Yeah, he, uh, he does have the moment. If he wants to hit a ball around, he can keep that touch fresh instead of icing himself. But we'll see exactly what he's bringing back to this next serve. Up one now instead of serving down one. Yeah. And that looks like they're regrouping at the net here, so... We'll be back to the action momentarily. Yeah, while we're waiting, let's shout out another one of our sponsors, Pair of Thieves. We got some of their underwear here. I don't I don't know if you can see it, but Buddy Hammond is actually sporting it as well. You can kind of see when that that butt starts to pop. He's wearing some Pair of Thieves underwear. Definitely the best underwear you can wear at a round at tournament. Let's as another down. reverse cut bangs past Frederick Hinkle, puts Sloppy Seconds up two here in the pivotal game two. They're trying to close this series in two games. Another great cut serve. Hammond goes high, but core tracks. Funaki settles. Hammond with the soft touch attempt, and Hinkle trying to recover, but it goes deep of the net. And that's a nice four-point run. They come out of the timeout with two more breaks for sloppy seconds. Yeah, it felt like it was a sloppy seconds timeout the way they responded to it, getting two quick breaks to go up 16-13. Great effort by Hammond and Hinkle, but just can't receive these serves well enough. Now five points away from closing out this tournament. That serve hits rim from Panaki, but not before he does some serious damage. Four straight breaks on some really, really hot serves. Hinkle needs to answer right here. He tries to, but that one rolls up just above Panaki's shoulder for a second serve. That one's in play. Oh. Hinkle called carry on the receive. I think you're going to observers, and observers are calling it clean. So point for sloppy seconds. Core here, serving to Hammond. Steps out, and that one's in the bar. Tough moment there for Hinkle and Hammond. Have some momentum with that good serve, but now have to regroup. They control well on offense, though. Keep the game within 15, 17, two points here. Yeah, so Hammond here has a choice. Does he want to try to get it done with the serves, or is he going to rely on the defense? We haven't seen him go for the backhand in a while. Maybe just wasn't feeling it when he warmed up today. 
but can't hurt to get a good serve on this first attempt. Could be saving it for this very moment. Perhaps another moment as he goes forehand, received by Core, and pulls it past Buddy. But he's saying he's not really sure where he wants to be there defensively. Just too well controlled by sloppy seconds. Back to Fanaki. He had four straight breaks last time he had yeah. the ball. If he had four straight breaks now, well, then that'd just be a bonus point above 21. It's all they need. As he goes wide of Hinkle. Hinkle, Hinkle tried to call high, but Fanaki thought he may have ducked under the ball. So that's a challenging one because it's based on your starting athletic stance, and, and Hinkle definitely went lower than that. Yeah, Hinkle ducked as that ball was coming in. That made it appear high. It definitely was higher than the shoulder when it got to him, but the rule is wherever your shoulder is resting at your athletic stance, that is the line the ball needs to be above to be too high. The observers are saying, yes, it was too high. Even with the dip, the ball was, or even without the dip, rather, the ball yeah. was above the shoulder. A good reverse cut from Hinkle, and they're unable to handle it on the set and hit. That's okay. a critical break to get back Puts them within one. Now 17-18 on the rotation here. Hinkle looking at Travis Core on the receive. Yeah, suddenly much more doable. That one up clean, though. Sets off net, and Hammond, Hammond stays in that comfortable yeah. body position. Interesting. The so set. Maybe you can't see it, but there's a little bit of wind. The wind's blowing from left to right. So that ball, that set from Fanaki, maybe would have been closer without the wind, but really kept Travis off and really only had one direction to go, but Hammond stayed close to net. Core trying to line up a dagger at 1917. Another chance here. Finds the rim instead. Okay, 1819. Hammond got to get it going here. Running out of time. Hammond lines up forehand. Settled cleanly, go, go, a go, go, high go. backhand from Vinaki, a little errant hit, but Hinkle, a little stumbling on the ground, not able to find it. Yeah, Brings again, up you see Vinaki a little bit out of his comfort zone, not hitting the low flick shot, but him and Hinkle just not able to capitalize. Now we've got double match point. A nice reverse cut, but Hammond finds it. Settled well, Hors on the, s on the rotation well, again, rotating around that blind spot for Hammond, but the touch not high enough. Okay, last chance here for Hinkle and Buddy Hammond. Hinkle ball in hand to serve. Needs a break here to keep their hopes alive. This is the moment you practice for. You're practicing for that big 19-20 serve that you line up. Unreal is the first one. Now facing down championship point with a second serve to play. That's in play. Court gets set up. And he gets it off Hinkle's hand, but that's not going to come back for, Slop for Sloppy. They're going to take the series in two, 21-19 on game two there. Great showing for Travis Korn and Gabe Fanaki. Gabe Fanaki's first tour stop win. Core has a couple dating back to his days as flexual healing with Jarrett Rouse and easily dug with Andrew Card, but awesome to get a win with a new partner. And for sure, that has to vault them to the top of the rankings. I mean, they beat the number two team, they beat the number one team, and they finally got a win here in Rock Hill. Absolutely. And for Gabe Fanaki, that's his first Tour Stop Finals appearance, so he's undefeated in his Tour Stop Finals as well. So that's exciting for him, showing really well in those finals. Yeah, for using LeBron metrics, he's now 1-0, and oh, and that's all that matters. <laughs> Discard all the losses that weren't in finals. Exactly. Thanks for watching the Pro Finals between Sloppy Seconds and Hammond Hinkle. For Ben Dantowitz, I'm Ezra Dantowitz. We'll see you in the next one.